Okay, English teacher friends. So this video was requested uh, many times, actually. I've been asked uh, often uh, how I facilitate my Word Study Academy. So starting uh, from day one of the academic year, uh, I do intensive Word Study with my students. And many of you have noticed that follow my work and um, my students uh, can cop a pretty decent academic um, uh, vocabulary in their writing. A lot of them can, and uh, it's intense. So we do we do a lot a lot of words um, over the course of the academic year, and I have very many different ways uh, of teaching vocabulary. So I'm just going to show you one uh, today that we used. Uh, for the crucible. So I chose something that I think, you know, if you're an English teacher for 30 years, you make a career out of, out of teaching, you're, you'll invariably encounter the crucible. So uh, I did this with my juniors. I'm in New York State, and uh, so we do uh, the regents exam. So it's just gen ed, um, you know, straight up juniors. And uh, the request was to see how I do everything from the game, the gamification to the actual testing or quizzing of the, uh, of the vocabulary. So I'm more than happy to, uh, to demonstrate, uh, how to, how to do this. So one thing that my students do as they read is keep a vocabulary journal. And, uh, my rule is this. If you come upon a word you don't know, underline it and put it in your vocabulary journal. So with the crucible, we identified, I've taught the crucible for 20 years. Uh, uh, there, I've compiled four, a total of 40 words that I feel your typical junior does not know. And you got like five of them right here. So in the journal, um, I want my students to write down the word, the part of speech, the definition, and then use it properly in context. And I find that that helps with recall and retention. There's actually a lot of cognitive science uh, on that, that once a student can use a word properly in context three times, they possess that word for eternity, right? They're, 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 good, they're good to go with it. So uh, I do great journals. I do expect that my students keep vocabulary journals. I collect them. Uh, I just do basically compliance grades uh, for it. Um, don't spend a lot of time, um, you know, laboring over, uh, you know, the correct definitions and all that stuff. It's just pretty easy to cut and paste, uh, you know, definitions from dictionary.com or whatever. And uh, students actually help each other out with, uh, with that. And the cool thing is, I think students really, really appreciate this. I, I kept word journals um, starting when I was 15 years old, you know, and I'm 47 at the time of recording this. So I show them journals that I kept when I was a junior in high school. At that time, I was reading uh, really turned on by Jack Kerouac's On the Road, and I still have that word journal. And I have Robert Piercig's Zen and the Utter Motorcycle Maintenance. So it gives you a sense of where my head was at, uh, you know, as a teenager. And then uh, the electric Kool-Aid acid test was also from uh, junior year. So I was discovering the beatniks at that point in time, learning all sorts of great words. And uh, I still do it when I read. I have word journals, fascinated by words. So with this um, particular um, vocabulary exercise, we gamify it using hungry hippos. So I literally have a hungry hippos um, in the center of my room on a, on a table. And um, my students have, uh, at the time of playing this gamified vocabulary game, uh, all 40 words in their journal. Okay. And if you want, I should have said that earlier. If you want the list of those words, I can send them to you. Just email me. My email will be at the end of this uh, demonstration. So given that there are four different colored hippos, I split the class into four teams and I just call one person from each team up to the hippo. And you know, the basic rules of hungry hippo, gobble as many marbles as you can. So, um, Anyways, the, 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 the number of marbles gobbled is how many um, 
guesses they can take towards a question. And I'll show you that in a second. So if a student, if, 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 you know, team red gets four marbles, they have four guesses at the, at the, um, uh, vocabulary question that I'm going to show you in a second. If they get it correct, um, it's worth 10 points. And with rules and setup, that was really nebulous and vague and indescript make it up. So kids love to make up their own rules. Um, rules change as we play. Um, it, it just make, you know, have fun with it. Make it make sense for them. Make it make sense for you. You don't have to do things uh, exactly the way I do it. It really depends upon class size, maturity, um, you know, the reticence of, of, of a particular group, uh, etc. So, with this particular vocabulary exercise, um, it features something that I've talked a little bit about in my other vocabulary videos, and I call it exercising the pause. When I write, so like I, I've, I publish my poetry, I publish my textbooks, I'm writing all the time. And as I write, I'm writing, 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 and I pause and say, ah, what's the best word? What's the best word? What's the best word? And usually when I'm searching for that best word, I'm looking for a tier two level word. And by tier two, I simply mean your uh, average run of the mill SAT caliber level word, right? And in the word journal, those are all tier two level words. And I contend that students have thousands of tier two level words in their head that they just don't access because they don't exercise the pause. And if they stop long enough, they can retrieve those words and use them in their speech and in their writing. We just have to train them to do that. So this is an exercise, this game here, that um, really allows them to exercise that pause and go uh, retrieving tier two. So you'd be surprised at how many words they've sponged uh, just by being 15, 16, 17 years old, and thousands of words. So as always um, with gamification, I, I bring forward the uh, elements of collaboration and competition. And some of you are familiar with my Plato's Plato um, discussion modality. It's kind of a hybrid uh, Socratic seminar, Harkness discussion, fishbowl, just gamified. I find, and there's a whole bunch of research on this that I've done, that uh, students learn best when they're collaborating and, comp you know, being competitive. Not nasty competitive, but, um, you know, competing against each other. And uh, it's really interesting to see unfold, and it builds great rapport for the classroom, too. My students actually ask to do these things when they come into class. They're like, hey, can we pretty please, you know, do a Hungry Hippo uh, vocab exercise today? Or can we play Jenga? And um, they, uh, they look forward to it. So what I've done is this. So of those 40 words from the crucible, I've taken each one and I've written a sentence or two. And each sentence has a blank. The blank needs to be filled in with the appropriate tier two level word from the play. So to give you an example, you know, the kids will come up to the hungry hippo and they'll gather their marbles. And the team that has the most marbles gets this first uh, uh, question, and it's this. Even though they are the worst team in the league, I am a blank supporter of the New York Knicks. No one loves them more than I do. So kids get into that pause. They get into that retrieval, tier two. And there's 40 words, right? So they haven't memorized them all. But I want them saying things like fervent, avid, um, you know, staunch, uh, real good tier two level words. And then eventually we'll get to this. The word that uh, Arthur Miller used was avid. So if they come up with that, they get 10 points. So let's say team one, the red team has four marbles. They have four guesses at that. Right. So you basically go until you exhaust your marbles. Um, and it's really cool because not only are students learning the word avid, but they're introduced to staunch, uh, fervent, uh, 
uh, you know, any, I, I'm, I'm drawing blanks, but kids have these words uh, in their, in their resources. And we just kind of have a word slam all day long, playing a game, learning vocab. It's really cool. And these words uh, ultimately adhere to the Velcro of their memories and they use them. So here's another one. There are two opposing blanks in the political debate. One side is all for the budget. The other is 100% against it. So I wrote these, you know, so there are two opposing sides, they'll say. And I'm like, no, that's not tier two. No, no loss of a marble. Like we want, you know, words like factions and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, we did this the other day and kids were talking about schisms. Um they were talking about factions, which I think is what, yep, is what Arthur Miller uh, wanted. So here's another one. My brother and I could not be more blank opposed. We are always at odds with each other and fighting. Um, vehemently opposed, diametrically opposed, right? And Miller's word was diametrically. So they're just, they're going to come up with words that, um, uh, are really good. So you're solidifying, you know, the vocabulary of the uh, of the work that you're teaching, but at the same time, you're learning a whole bunch of other tier twos. And then here's one last one. My mind cannot even begin to blank why she's dating him. He's so not right for her. My mind cannot even begin to speculate, uh, fathom, uh, rationalize. Uh, I think it was Fathom, yeah, was uh, from The Crucible. So uh, pretty cool stuff. So that's just one way that I do, uh, you know, vocab. Um, you know, you can get through all 40 words like that pretty quickly. Um, you know, probably we, we teach on the block. So probably like one class period, you know, you can get through and do a, 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 a real good vocabulary exercise. And uh, you don't even need to do all 40 words. You can just break it down, maybe do like, you know, three or four, five per class, spend 10 minutes and move on. So it's pretty neat. So um, anyways, many of you know that I got a few irons in the fire. Um, I'll be presenting in Anaheim in the fall with uh, Tim Freitas and Brandon Abden at the NCTE conference and uh, very much looking forward to um, working alongside those two gentlemen. And uh, starting real soon, we're putting the final touches on everything. I'll be offering some professional development with the National Writing Project. So they hired me as a lead teacher to do um, uh, kind of like a five week, uh, mastermind course around my essential question. What if we taught composition like Bob Ross teaches painting? So we'll do, we're going to go over everything in that, uh, in that course from my word study Academy, my nuance Academy, my templates, uh, how to write across the expository modes, modeling, and just being good Bob Rosses of composition. So it's pretty cool. And then uh, Perfection Learning, we'll do um, a webinar a month with them. And um, so stay, stay abreast of things, and um, uh, I'll keep you posted in the Facebook groups as to my comings and goings. So I hope that was useful. It's just, again, one creative way that I have to teach vocabulary. Um, you know, it may or may not fit your teacher skin. Uh, but my students definitely like it, and they seem to uh, uh, augment their vocabs pretty nicely over the course of the academic year. So be well for now. Take care.